Summer. So nice to see you here at NAM 2022. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? We're finally back to it after all these COVID years. The resurrection yep. of NAM. But I wanted to talk to you about these amazing, amazing photos we got of your guitars a couple years back, right? It was, uh, yeah. where year did we shoot that? 2017. Yeah, when the world was a different place. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed it was. And it was a, the world was a different place as well back when you were playing with Paul McCartney in Wings. Indeed it was. And We didn't have phones, right? iPhones, we didn't have computers. But you had guitars. We had guitars, yeah, those, those haven't changed. I, I still, when I, when I started my career as a studio musician in London, I would go to a session with a Les Paul, a Strat, an acoustic, and a nylon string and a, like a bag full of pedals and a little Fender amp. And I still do that today. You know, so. That's your setup that you're comfortable with. Well, but it's also, it covers most of the bases, you know. Sure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the Gibson SG that I photographed here. Well, when Wings were rehearsing for the UK tour in 79, I was looking around for a nice light stage guitar because my Les Paul was heavy and my 335 was kind of big and I stumbled across this at um, Chandler Guitars and apparently it had previously belonged to um, Alan Holdsworth but you know SG's and Alan Holdsworth are like Stratocasters and Hendrix you're never really sure but uh, but it, it sounded great and it played great and so I just bought it off the wall and took it into the rehearsals and ended up using it on the tour and and, and have used it since on in studio sessions and stuff. And what's interesting is that also featured in this book is George Harrison's Gibson SG that yeah. he used on the Revolver album. Right, that 1966 period. You know, because I think George liked humbuckers, you know, and I mean then he went over to using the Les Paul that he got from Clapton, but but the. But the SG, I mean, that's a, a handy guitar. The only issue really is because the neck is so long, I have to remind myself where I am, because otherwise I'll end up on the wrong fret. You know? <laughs> and also, it, like you said, it is a versatile guitar because John Lennon also used the same uh, uh, SG that George used on the White Album. They traded it. Right. Now, but I discovered something interesting, because you know, the. The bridge, the, the neck pickup isn't exactly in the right place. It has, I guess it has something to do with the neck joint. And I was never truly happy with the sound of that. And I swapped it around. So the pole pieces, the adjustable pole pieces are on the bridge side rather than on the fingerboard side. Okay. And it sounds so much better. Interesting. Yeah. Can I ask one a of fan my COVID question? era experiments? As yeah. a fan question, sure. as an archetype Beatle fan, and I was 22 when Wings Over Bear came through uh, in '79. No, '76 was Wings Over America. '76. Yeah, that was that tour. I joined in '78. '70. Oh, so I'll yeah. just ask this question: What were your favorite McCartney songs to play on that tour? Well, I loved doing Let It Be because Paul hadn't done it since the Beatles. And, we, and he has, I don't know if he's done it since. I mean, it was that on that 79 tour, that was really a highlight for me. Um, every night, uh, maybe I'm amazed, maybe, you know. Uh, but also the Back to the Egg stuff, I mean. Yeah. You know, I love, Spin It On was always a cool one to play. And, and um, also Good Night Tonight. You know, which kind of got a little bit dismissed as a disco single, because Columbia put out a 12-inch and called it a disco single. But going back to that, it really is kind of more of a kind of like a almost like a Latin dance record. It's interesting that the last two Wings hits were both dance records, "Good Night Tonight" and "Coming Up," and we did "Coming Up" on that tour too. So. That's that, the guitar that, that video oh, was ubiquitous on MTV, coming up video. Well, Paul's coming up video, yeah. but, but that wasn't the, the version that made it to number one. It was a live version that made it to number one. Cause, yeah, because the 
studio version was kind of that quirky McCartney 2 sound and the radio stations didn't really like it that much and then they flipped it because when they discovered there was a live version on the B side and that went to number one. And to segue from that into McCartney 3, uh, he recorded that entire album during COVID uh, single-handedly right. in a studio where I actually went and photographed his 63 Hopper bass and they had um, uh, 50 GoPro cameras mounted all over the entire studio. Oh, wow. So you see every angle and the videos are really cool because you've oh, got cool. all these different yeah. angles of him. But tell us about the, uh, the gold top there. That's got some <laughs> history. Well, when we went to Japan for the tour that ended up not happening because he got busted, I, I went via New York with the McCartneys the rest of the band went the other way. They went from London straight to Tokyo. But I, I had a reason to be in New York for the weekend. So while I was there on 48th Street, which at that time was the mecca for gear. Now it's, it's nothing left. You know. But then I walked into a store and there was this gold top, which was like number one on my shopping list. And I couldn't resist it. So I bought it and took it with me going into Tokyo. So I was hand carrying it on the plane. So when Paul got busted, I had it in my hand when we had to go, you know, as it were, backstage at Narita and, and get go through all the, you know, the, the security stuff. And so I'm in a side room with my guitar and two agents come in with a screwdriver and point to the guitar and, and I had to unscrew the truss rod cover and the plastic panels on they the They made back. you do it. Yeah, well I, I wasn't gonna let them do it. So I said, I'll do it. And, and of course there was nothing there. You know, we'd all vacuumed our pockets. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, we knew that you, you had to be clean going into Japan, so. Um, Except Paul didn't get that message. He didn't get no, the memo. No, he didn't, no. <laughs> And I was standing next to him when all that happened. Yes. So, yes. And uh, that, that's in, indelibly seared in my memory. That's the greatest fly on the wall. Yeah, really. Wall. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, thank you so thank much you, for being Lynn. a part thank of you, Immortal Axes. Well, and thank you for including me. Absolutely. In it's my yeah. honor, Lawrence. Thank, thank you, you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.